Well guys, it looks like this year, like the last, also promises to be a year of the sauropod. Haolonggu teased the massive sauropods in this image and they've made good on that promise and this is the opening salvo. This, my friends, is the incredible titanosaurian Elamosaurus. I've already talked a bit about it in the PNSO review. Besides, this already promises to be a two-part video, so you want me to shut up and just get to the money. And the money, in this case, is the size. The pure horizontal length is 53.5 cm or 21 inches. The highest point from the top of the head to the surface is 73 cm or 28.7 inches. Then I estimate the through central length at 76 cm or 30 inches. Molina Perez and Laramendi estimate a through central length of 26 meters or 85.3 feet. So this model is about 1 to 34.2. Here's the Wonder Artistic Models 1 to 35 humanoid for comparison. Next, the overall impression. First, the color. There are three color variants. There's A, the black. B the purple, and then C the plain version. Now I absolutely loved the A, but, and I hope I'm not putting thoughts into your head here, when I saw these lines, there's something that kind of made my skin crawl a bit. I, I don't know, it's kind of like that feeling if you have trypophobia. You see a bunch of holes? That's a feeling that I got. The B variant looked like it was plain in this area, so I decided to order that. Then another photo of the bee bun surfaced that also showed the same squiggles, so I switched my order back to A. There was another reason why, as much as I loved A, I went with B, but I might reveal that in the future. And actually, looking at the C bun one, uh, just not having those squiggles, I think I would have been happy with that one as well. Now here, you can see that these beautiful blends in the dorsal stripes have been carried through. And sadly too, you have these squiggles. But in real life, because they're so much bigger than in a small picture, it doesn't make me feel as queasy. So let's get to the details. Plenty of detail. Such as the face. The raised soft tissue around the nostril. The lip area. The scaly folds around the eyes. And you see what looks like a ramphatika in the front here. A nice surprise is this splash of red, a visual accent that suggests signaling or attraction purposes. And I like it because I've always believed it possible that these majestic creatures would have some colour to create some visual highlights. And it's nice how some of the red then diffuses very lightly a little way down here. And going down, you can see that beautifully fine scale detail. And here's an immediate statement that given this very large canvas, Haolonggu will maximize it with the kind of detail we saw in the Repetosaurus. And I think you'll see no less impressive. And going down, it's just never-ending care in detail of paint and sculpt. Just look at the variety of size, shape, and even fineness, uh, the different levels of fineness. And I, and, I, and I feel compelled to give you a sense of scale with, again, my little almond. Look at how the scales just flow over skin folds, muscle bulges, and other surface terrain. Now gone are the old days of thick wrinkles. In fact, 
in some areas, it seems like Harunku could have afforded to go a little bit thicker. Get the folds, some hints of the vasculature. And then we get down into the body. The dedication to detail continues here. Of course, you'll see how smoothly and naturally the patterns are blended into the surrounding. In addition, while these scales in the neck are very, very, very tiny and exquisitely fine, the expected increased scale size in this area is also very fine. And indeed, if you didn't have the neck to compare with, you would have no idea that these can be considered large at all. And that's really what impressed me back in their Apatosaurus. No excuses, no lazy shortcuts, just plenty of pride and professionalism here. Now here are those squiggles that I was talking about. Now seeing them here in a larger absolute size, I'm kind of okay with them. But I wish they'd gone with closing out these ends to create a bit of a reticulated pattern like in the original concept art. Now the stripes wise, the blending as we've seen is very nice, but again, I was hoping that more of the initial concept would have been followed without the lighter colour here between the very dark purple brown and the almost, um, I want to say, dark aqua colour here. Just looks a bit more badass. Of course, being Elamosaurus, you've got to have osteoderms. I've spoken at length about them in my PNSO Elamosaurus review, so I won't repeat myself here. The density of skewed to skin isn't as exuberant as I've seen in some reconstructions, and I like very much that they're coloured the same as the skin in areas where they are truly subdermal. In areas like this, where the pointy ends are exposed, you have a slightly bony coloration mixed in. If that's intentional, then it's nice points from me. And for me, the real happiness is here. You see how these ones seem to be paired? And you see how the larger osteoderms seem to be away from the midline here? Well, for me, it conveys the impression that as the animal grows in size and the skin expands outwards, the osteoderms are also growing along in size and following the skin. And so the newer ones are in the middle, and still small and subdermal, while the older ones erupt and get larger, towards the periphery. Now obviously, it's a bit of fanciful imagination on my part. The possibility of this could be rather ridiculous, depending on any number of boring factors I won't get into here. But at the very least, the very organic appearance of this arrangement with a pattern that hints at some underlying logic, instead of just being stuck on in a prey and spray fashion, really elevates this in my eyes. Absolutely, wonderfully, beautiful and pleasing. And now the forelimbs. Again, you can see that detail, and again, you can see that colour. And I must add that the decision to have these stripes change in colour from the mainly deep aqua, or at least uh, green-blue, call it what you will, into the deep purple here visually lends interest to an area that most people wouldn't normally pay attention to. And as for the detail, just wonderful. No area has been neglected. And even in these wrinkles, to see that the scales follow and complement their flow. And heading down to those metacarpals, 
and see that fade is still very thoughtfully applied, again with that detail. PNSO made the decision to include a thumb claw based on its retention in Diamantina Saurus. Here, this is missing, which is what most people expect in a derived Titanosaurid. And in this sense, it's likely to be more pleasing. Though once again, I want to link to thoughts by Nima Sasani below to give a more nuanced view. Just a look at the underside. Then the hind limbs. These are again large slabs of muscle, and of course by now, you expect that Haolongku will still have that detail here. I like how some of these osteoderms are also present, going down the front thigh here. And just a look at the all-round detail now. Then those claws. And even underneath, look at the care taken to give the foot pads such skin detail. While we're here, just a quick look at the underside. And now the tail. Once again, the blending of colours is very well done. And I like how, just like in the volume, these deep aqua patterns segue into something a lot more red. Until, in a more gradual way, but still obvious, is that colour accented tail tip that Haolongku used to have as a signature in almost all their dinosaurs. And not just that, but you can see how the osteoderms are present going all the way to the end of the tail and just the way the stripes cut across them is really pleasing. It really sells the idea of what osteoderms are, being mostly subdermal. The twirl in this tail is very interesting, and shows a flexibility that might surprise some. Still, titanosaurids are very fragmentary, but as Diaz Diaz and Vidal suggest, there's no reason to suspect that titanosaurs have a reduced number of caudals compared to other titanosauri forms, so I'll just enjoy this. Now, the pose. This is a very active pose, and instead of the usual amble seen in many other sauropods, this one has a sense of authority, urgency, and purpose. Every angle looks good, and with detail and colour like this, it should hold a very commanding position on your sauropod shelf. And finally, let's talk about the base. If you got your pre-order in early, it would be free, otherwise you'd have to pay about um, US $15 for it. Now what really shocks me is the quality of it. Now this isn't the kind of cheap base you'd expect for something that could have been free, you can see the colour complexity, of course. But look at that detail also. The very gritty, grainy texture of the ground. The green mossy patches here. rocks here, 
This cluster of ferns does look rather plasticky from some angles, especially juxtaposed with how sterling everything else is, but it would be easy enough to get it repainted. The very reflective and wet looking run of water. And see how is it contacts the moss here. The moss actually looks wet. Ah, and this trunk, which attaches magnetically to the base. The textures, the imperfections, uh, hints of damage or weathering. It's almost like a real twig you might find in the wilderness. I mean, this is the kind of quality base you normally get with resin statues. Well, let me show you. This base came with the Weetai Teratophonius. That's a $260 statue in today's dollars. Now this Haolongku is freaking $90 in the US. And even if you didn't get the base on the pre-order, for an additional $15, I think it's a no-brainer, of course, if you can afford it. If that's not enough, you also get one of two possible unpainted pterosaurs. It's a bit hard to see. And I can't paint to save my life. Uh, but what if you could? Imagine, if you will, a rather drab affair with the Alamosaurus over here. And then over here, an incredible splash of colour. Imagine the juxtaposition. I'm really looking forward to see what Andy, who's an amazing artist as well as a reviewer, does with his when he reviews this model. So, that's it for the Haolongku Alamosaurus. I'm really sorry to do this to you guys, but this video has just gotten so long and it's taken up so much time, I have to leave it to a second video for the comparisons. So, I'll see you soon.